uh, once again, I mean, if we say this every time, it gets repetitive, but such an incredible yeah. interview. And again, in honor of Veterans, yeah. Veterans Day, Davey and I are so grateful for your service. And I think this yeah. conversation that you had with Fernando just <sighs> seeks to re- really the weight that our, many of our military carry yeah. in their post-military life is yeah. real. Right. Yep. And you're right. There's healing that's possible. I love that Fernando shares his story because of that. But what a wild well, one. I love that he's shared a story. He's also using his experience and he's helping other people in purposeful mission and ministry right which now. Which is so nothing is wasted. Which is so nothing is wasted. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, he has found a purpose after, you know, and, uh, you, heard, you heard him talk about this, how difficult it was to find that purpose yeah. after serving in the military mm. And I can only imagine, I mean, I can only imagine the intensity that you experience of that kind of a just uh, intense is probably the the intense purpose that you're every single day you're on mission and then to kind of come back into civilian life and go, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Right. Right. And so uh, I can't imagine how difficult that is to um, re-regulate, reorient after that. And man, what an amazing moment. Where okay. this the Bible flies off the desk. Aubrey. How cool is that? I, I mean, cool might be an like under, cool's an um, understatement. <laughs> I was shocked when I which by the way, let me put a pin in this for a second. This this interview was so difficult to capture. We had so many technical issues on this, and we don't <gasps> have that often. We had oh. so many technical issues. Which tells me that yeah. there was some there was some supernatural resistance that totally. was happening in this interview. So, totally. I mean, the Lord really came through. We finally mm. just kind of had to scrap a whole bunch of the normal technology that we use and just really mm. try to cobble this thing together and figure it out. So huge props to our editors wow. for making this happen. However, like the the enemy has been warring against Fernando and his work and what's going on. Dang. But you can also see God showing up in supernatural ways uh, it, in it, his, his story. It's so unbelievable. And I, Davey, you and I actually kind of before recording, we're talking about some of our own experiences of just the yeah. supernatural presence of God and things God has done or things that have happened that you're like, okay, only the Lord could do this. Right. right. And this, my story is not the same. I have many stories, but this one particular story, Fernando's reminded me of it. And it's not to the same degree as his, because his one was in the middle of deep, deep trauma. Mm. But a, as a young girl, I remember one night, um, being so afraid of the dark. And I honestly felt like there were, uh, this may sound kooky to some listeners or other listeners will be like, yep, I know exactly what we were talking about. Mm. I felt like there was like some evil presence in this. I was staying at yeah. somebody's house. There was an evil yeah. presence in this room and I could mm. not sleep. And even as a young girl, I was like very aware, like aware something's wow. going on here and I'm praying. I get up, I'm pacing and I'm a little, I mean, not yeah. little like nine, but I think I was probably 11 or 12. And I was like, I need to go get a Bible. And I need to read the Bible. And so I snuck out into the living room, which I was scared to do because it was somebody else's house. I found a Bible. I knew they were a a family of believers or at least some believers in the home, brought it back into the room. And I was just like, God, I need some scripture to help me go Mm. back to sleep. And Davey, the pages of the Bible started turning by themselves And landed right on the Proverbs that says, when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or the rule that overtakes the wicked because of that, you know, your sleep will be sweet. And, and it was one of those moments where I was like looking around, like, is there a fan on? No. Is the air conditioning on? No. Mm. The pages of my Bible literally turned. And sometimes I forget that happened. And then every once in a while, the Lord brings it to mind. And I'm like, God, I don't know why I doubt you. Like you do these yeah. supernatural things that you, I think sometimes you just forget. But yeah. then when you remember, you're like, okay, God, your your presence yeah. is real. Oh, yeah. you know, say the Bible flying off of his desk to right. stop him from ending his life. Okay, God, you're real. I mean, there's right. nothing else you can do but go. Okay, God, you're real. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, here's the thing. I think we just I think we underestimate and downplay the spiritual battle that that's is that's true. You're There's right. A play we do. At all times. We do. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, the, uh, w- 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 the old Piper thing that he used to talk about, like, like make war because right. Like we're and that's specifically around sin, but having the the idea or the mindset that we're in a battle, we're not yeah. at peacetime, we're at wartime. Like yeah. the, there is a yeah. battle that is raging and being waged mm. in the unseen places at all times. Mm. 
Mm. And I think in the American Western culture, we forget that because totally. we are inoculated by comfort, yeah. Yeah. convenience, yeah. Distraction. Stuff, everything we need, distraction, yeah. right? And so I remember reading, you, you know, the um, the C.S. Lewis book, um, uh, the one with Wormwood, uh, the screw tape letters. Screw tape letters, yes. And one of the things that he talked about was like the difference between, or he alluded to this in the book, the difference between like a third world country and like a first world country. And then the enemy has different strategies in each one of these. Uh-huh. The first world country, it's to distract and busy. Yes. Right. Which is funny because the Hellenistic culture way back when Alexander the Great brought Hellenism, his whole ploy was people won't meddle in what we're doing mm. politically if we bring them entertainment. If they're distracted. If we bring yep. them sports, if we bring them abundance, yep. they'll be happy. And we yep. can do whatever we want to behind the scenes. And yep. that's kind of like a picture of the enemy's strategy Wild. with first world culture. Yeah. Whereas third world culture, if you've ever been to a third world country, mm-hmm. you know, my dad grew up in Haiti as a missionary's kid and I've been there before. There's a lot of awareness of the supernatural, but the enemy uses that as a fear mongering or a fear yes. tactic. Yes. So trying to f- cause people to be afraid. And so they, they kind of essentially put themselves in bondage. Mm to these powers, yes. these dark powers, That's so to speak. Very true. And so Haiti is yep. a, Haiti is a, 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 a syn- syn- syncretistic, syn- mm-hmm. is that what it is? Syncretic. Syncretistic culture. Syncretistic yep. culture. What that means or is. Or syncretist is there is culture. Syncretist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a heavy influence of Catholicism and a heavy influence of voodooism. And they've mixed those two essentially yeah. religions together. Yeah. And Syncretism that's what's at play is, there. is like the mixing of religions for people who yes, don't know or the mixing right. of Thank different you, beliefs. Thank you, Aubrey. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for yep. <laughs> bringing the tough cookies to the bottom shelf yep. for us. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to do that. <laughs> uh, so, so what I experienced when we were in, um, it was my first touch with the supernatural uh, at 12 years old was when, when I went to Haiti. My dad took me there as like a wow. rite of passage in a manhood kind of trip. Mm, cool. And we spent two weeks there. First week was in the mountains of of Port Margo, which is like the northern part of Haiti. Okay. And we would go to bed at night. They would shut the village lights off because wow. of just power conservation. They would sure. shut them off at nine o'clock. You go to bed at night, you're lying awake listening to drums in the background up on the hillsides of the mountains that were wow. actual voodoo drums, right? So these ceremonies Whoa. that were taking place. You're just Whoa. like aware of this. Whoa. Kind of really evil, dark. Yeah, force that's creepy. That, that inhabits and like oppresses this this country. Mm. So then we're driving back, Aubrey, t- from Port Margo to Port-au-Prince, the capital of uh, of Haiti. Mm-hmm. We were about to spend the next week out at the island, Laganov. And so we had to make it to Port-au-Prince before nightfall. And the reason is, is because it was the time of year, like around Mardi Gras. Yeah. And so they would have these pre-Mardi Gras parties Whoa. in these villages where they would do a lot of, I mean, really despicable things. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it would happen at nightfall and two weeks before us being there, they had, they, had, they had killed, they had drug out in the village and killed two missionaries during one of these pre Mardi Gras parties. Man. Um, they were called raw Ra's is what they called them. So mm. I just remember at 12 years old, my grandfather, who was the missionary there, my dad was a missionary's kid, my dad, my grandmother, all of them being very adamant about, we've got to make it back before sure, nightfall. Sure. Well, the roads in Haiti are awful. They're deplorable. I mean, it's just, so you don't know how to anticipate how long it's going to take you. Mm, Right. We're all in this Land Rover, like going back to Port-au-Prince. We don't make it by nightfall. Mm. It's starting to be dusk. We get to the last village uh, before Port-au-Prince and this, there's an assembly that's starting to happen in this road. It's, it's a a rah-rah. And it was, it got so, by the time we got there, it had had assembled so, uh, uh, so many people had collected in the village that we couldn't drive through the main mm. road there. Mm. And we're trying to inch our way through this crowd. Yeah. And it got to the place where this crowd surrounded our car and, and we were stopped. Davey. So here I am sitting on the back, like bump seat uh-huh. of the back seat. My grandfather's driving. My grandmother's in the front seat. My dad's sitting next to me and another missionary is on the other side. My dad like turns to shield me in case a rock comes through. And my all I remember is my grandfather's just praying. My both my grandfather and grandmother just praying, just mm. out loud. Wow. And Aubrey, I'm sitting on the back bump. I'm looking forward and this the car starts shaking like this because people are just like people are, yeah. Right? Davy. This is there's this what you would imagine a witch doctor to look like. Uh-huh. Walks out in front. He was clearly the leader of this whole thing. Yeah. Comes out in front of the car, starts yelling. Mm. Um, and then he starts pounding the hood of the car. Come on. 
And I'm, I mean, it like the prayer that's going on and I'm like, just like, I'm spooked. I have no idea what's going on. 12 years old on some level. I don't know how serious this is, but on another level, I'm like, this seems really serious. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched this witch doctor's eyes go from looking at us, just start pounding the hood of the car. And he looks up above our car all of a sudden and gets like deer in a headlight. Stop it. And then he immediately just parts the, it's like parting the Red Sea. He just moves everybody out of the way. Come on. And, and lets us go right through. Come on. Craziest thing I've ever Come experienced on. in terms of yeah. just a very real touch of the supernatural. Absolutely. That's what it was. And it was like, it was, mm. it's seared into me in my memory of just like, man, mm. there is a very real battle going mm. on. We have no idea the times mm. that God shows up for us in these moments. Mm. Unbelievable. And, you know, Aubrey, as I say this, I'm also very aware of the fact yeah. that there are a lot of people who are like, well, that's great that God showed up in that mm-hmm. kind of a very real way for Fernando and yeah. asked for you guys, but where's my yeah. Bible flying off the desk story? Yep. You know? Yep. I, I think that is a, I think that's a fantastic question because I, I think that's the question everybody's asked. That's amazing. I love hearing that. That's so incredible. Where's my sort of supernatural miracle or where's God showing up? for me in this situation or the, I mean, even sometimes I think we get in situations where like other people are getting prophetic words and we're not, and we're like, where's my word, you know? And it can, it can begin to feel like, does God love treasure value that Mm. person more than me, which is a lie from the enemy, by the way. Absolutely. Um, And yet it's a very easy lie to believe. It's a fair, because there's like proof in the pudding. Like, well, they got something that I didn't get. So why them? What makes right. them special? Mm-hmm. And I, I I think the way that we wrestle through that is we acknowledge that that's wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I and I think there are some places to land, though. And I'd love to hear your thought, but I'll, I'll give mm-hmm. mine really quickly, Davey. I think one place we land is kind of like Job, where we're mm-hmm. like, hey, this is the Lord's deal. And God gets to do what God wants to do. And yeah. our... Our call ultimately is Christians like like and I mean, this is like this is like deep, mature faith. What I'm about to say, our call as Christians is we don't worship God for those moments. We don't worship God for like blessings. We don't worship God for benefits. We don't worship God for like these supernatural things. We worship God for God's sake alone Mm. because Jesus is all that we need. Jesus right. is the treasure. Jesus is the bonus. Je- you know what I'm saying? And so yep, it's deep, mature faith to be like, even if God doesn't show yeah. up with these, the Bible flying off the table, right. I will choose to worship him because he's all I need. And that's, mm. that's the call of mature faith, but that's hard. Cause it means when right. everything else is stripped away, right? you're like, okay, I'm still going to worship God. Yeah. Simultaneously. I'm going to say the other thing is going to sound like the opposite of what I just said. Sometimes mm. it's that we're not looking. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We're not pausing. Like, you know, Moses almost missed the burning bush, but like he paused to be like, oh, that bush is on fire, but it's not odd. What's being consumed. Right. So some of it is like, are we slowing down in our life Mm. to practice the presence of God and see where God is doing his his own version of the Bible flowing off the desk Mm. in our lives? There are yeah. holy moments all around us. Like the veil yeah. is thin because of God's goodness. But we do in our, like you said, in our American sure. society, we're so distracted. Like, are we, we might be missing these incredible supernatural wow. things God is doing all around us. Wow. Whew. Man, Aubrey, I don't even know if I have anything to add to that. I mean, I think both of those points are so, so good and very helpful for us. To remember, right? Let's not build our theology around yes. the fantastical, right? Amen. Around yeah. the, because that is just chasing something mm. that is that is elusive that you can't. I mean, you and, can't it, and your emotions that. are going to ride this. Mm-hmm. I mean, true worshipers worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Is what Scripture tells us in John chapter four. Jesus said, "This is what a true. This is going to characterize a true worshiper. That you're going to be grounded in this truth, and so that grounding in that truth means the." In Habakkuk, where it says, even if, yes, right, I'm right. still going to trust in you, you yeah. know, so that's a, tr- that's truth. I'm, I'm, I'm grounding myself in the faithfulness of God, even if I cannot see it, yep. even if I cannot perceive it, I'm choosing to trust in that. That's, mm-hmm. that's a truth that's grounded. And then also being aware of the spirit mm-hmm. and where it's going to move us and move yeah. our souls, move our spirit, move our emotions, yeah. move our 
but but one it, thinking about things too binary, which often is the place that we land, yeah. especially with certain with denominations. It's like yep. we get way too binary. Yeah, landing in one of those camps solely is is um, diluting the experience that Jesus has for us, the real personal experience that He has for us. Mm-hmm. Right. If we just land on the emotional and, and, and we're just thinking about the personal, then we're missing the substance and the depth yep. from which that spirit comes. Right. Amen. And then if we just land in this like hard lined truth, mm-hmm. but no experience, no experience of the spirit, then we're like, yeah, it, it's going to squeeze out and, and quench yep. some of this personal thing that God is doing yeah. in your life. And that totally. happens in trauma, right? Where we, where we need to be aware of those things mm-hmm. and in just normal followership of Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I do believe that God will show up for you in very mm-hmm. personal ways. I've yep. said that over yep. and over and over. He's not going to show up in your timing and you cannot coerce him. Yep. You cannot corner him. Yep. You cannot manipulate him yep. into doing that. He is God. That's right. That's right. And he does what he does. And so use some of these stories as encouragement yeah. to say, man, God is real. Praise God. And yeah. I know that he's going to show up for me the way I need yeah. him to show up for me. Yeah, that's good. We're obviously passionate here at Nothing Is Wasted <laughs> about partnering with you to find God man. in the middle of your story, right? Like that's why we do what we do. And so we would love to invite you. Keep listening to the stories that we're sharing here on the podcast, but yeah. we also would love to invite you to go to nothingiswasted.com slash community. We've got community, our community platform there, Community Plus with all kinds of resources built specifically with you in mind so you can partner with God to take back your story. And so you can find God in these supernatural truth right. and spirit ways that Davey's talking about. We That's also right. want to sleep, thank Sleeping Alas for providing all of the music for the Nothing Is Wasted podcast. Yep. You can follow us on Instagram. We'd love to interact with you there. Um, we'd love for you to ask questions or whatever you want to do, you know, just share your story of how God's taking you from pain to purpose. Mm-hmm. Follow Nothing Is Wasted Ministries at Nothing Is Wasted Ministries. You can follow me at Davey Blackburn and you can follow Aubrey at Obsamp. And uh, we want to make sure that we we just we ask if you would do us a favor to like and subscribe to the YouTube. And we're on YouTube, so you can watch this. We can watch this interaction. I keep forgetting that. Right I keep telling you, I need I know, to like get my makeup cool. right and like. I know. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I know. Aubrey, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's funny, right? When you think about just being yeah, podcast like, oh, radio, then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I got to actually can see me. <laughs> Show up here. Yeah. So so like and subscribe to YouTube. Give That's Aubrey right. a big old wink. Tell her that That's she looks right. great. Please. And we'd also <laughs> love for you to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. Hey, friend, if you liked this episode, be sure to like and subscribe so that you can stay in the loop every time Nothing Is Wasted releases a piece of content here on this YouTube channel.